To begin, let's take a look at the Windows GDI. The Windows GDI or Graphics Device Interface is an API or application programming interface for creating and displaying graphical objects in Windows. It draws polygons, lines, rectangles, arcs, ellipses, and text. It also handles color palettes and font changes. Whereas the User32 Dynamic Link Library is responsible for creating and displaying windows and menus, the GDI subsystem is responsible for more sophisticated windows graphics. The GDI also provides windows applications with WYSIWYG. That is, what you see is what you get functionality, so that what you see on the screen is also printed in an identical fashion. While adequate for simpler games and less intricate graphics, the GDI is not well suited to rendering complex 3D imagery. For such a task, most 3D games will utilize DirectX or OpenGL. Before taking a look at some of these GDI graphics methods, we should review device context. The concept of device context defines the attributes or objects being displayed. Before an object can be drawn, a handle or pointer to the display output must be obtained. This handle to device context is usually referred to as HDC in MFC code. The device context is then released once objects have been drawn. First, let's examine CPaint DC. CPaint DC is a class of object in the MFC that responds to WMPaint message events that trigger the onPaint message handler function. Every time you build an instance of CPaint DC, it calls beginPaint, gets the device context, and then calls endPaint when done. When constructing a CPaint DC object, the this pointer that represents the current C dialog object being drawn upon is passed in as an argument to the constructor. The CPaint DC object itself must then be used to draw on the screen and passed as an argument to functions that draw. For example, here we have an overridden on paint method. Within the overridden on paint method, we declare a new instance of CPaint DC called X, passing in the this pointer as an argument to the constructor. Once we do, within the overridden on paint method, we can then use X and the dot operator to call one of the GDI graphics methods to draw on the C dialog background. Or, if we wanted to, we could pass it to another function, like draw map. In contrast are CClient DC objects. CClient DC objects are created when only the device context of the client area of a window is desired. Upon instantiation, the client DC class's constructor calls get DC and its destructor calls release DC when done. This brings us to the onWMPaint identifier. onWMPaint is a message event added between MFC message map tags that triggers the onPaint message handler method when transmitted, causing objects to be drawn upon the screen. Here's an example. These are the message map tags for the drifter's main window, in this case the main C dialog of this game. And I've added the onWMPaint message identifier. Upon hearing this message identifier, Windows triggers the onPaint message handler. OnPaint is the message handler function that is automatically called when a WMPaint message is triggered. This can be caused by the invalidate or invalidate rec method being called or any other circumstance that requires repainting the screen. Here we have the message map tags for the drifter's main window or C dialog object. And down here we've added the onWMPaint message identifier. And when that message is heard, it's going to go trigger or call the onPaint message handler. So here we've overridden the parent class's on paint method. And notice here we're building an instance of uh, CPaint DC, calling it DC, and we're passing into this pointer. And then for the rest of our functions, we're taking that instance and passing it into functions like draw map. And then draw map then turns around and passes it to other functions like map tracking. Let's take a look at the invalidate method. It invalidates a specified area or object marking it for repaint the next time a WM paint message triggers the on paint message handler. Example, we're simply calling invalidate. Another method related to invalidate is invalidate rect. It invalidates a specific rectangular region of a specified area or object marking it for repaint the next time a WM paint message triggers the on paint message handler. For example, here we have a function where we instantiate or build a CREct object called clearbox. Then we use the method getClientRect and pass in the address of Clearbox to get the client area. Once we do this, we're going to move Clearbox to X and Y, 5 and 375 respectively. Finally, we're going to call invalidateRect, which would then mark that area for repaint the next time an event triggered on paint. Another related method is updateWindow. This method calls onPaint just as though a WMPaint message had been fired triggering an onPaint message handler. 
and in this case would call for repainting the entire C dialog. Which brings us to the C rect object. Instantiating a C rect class object builds a rectangular region of a specified size that can be moved around and passed to various methods as a way of designating a particular area for drawing or repainting. Its constructor takes the arguments left, top, right, and bottom. For example, I'm instantiating a C rect object and calling it clear box in this example. The left is 0, the top is 0, the right is 100, and the bottom is 100. Here in this example, we have four message handler functions, north, south, east, and west. And these correspond to four C buttons on our C dialog that relate to the four cardinal directions the player can navigate in. When any one of them is clicked, it does three things. It assigns a string to a global C string, it calls the method switchboard, and then it calls the function repaint vector map. Let's go take a look at that function's definition. So if we scroll up here, here's repaint vector map. And the first thing we're going to do is instantiate a C rect object. Once we build it, we're going to pass in arguments to the constructor, 0 for left, 0 for top, 100 for right, and 100 for bottom. So to build a rectangle 100 by 100. Then we're going to go call the method get client rect, pass in the address of our instance of the C rect object, clear box. That'll get the client area. Next, we're going to call move to x and move to y to set the x and y coordinates to 5 and 375 respectively. Finally, we're going to call invalidate rect Pass in our instance of the C-Rect object clearbox and 1 to clear or update the screen. We need to call this method every time we click a navigation button because as the player walks through the game, we're constructing a map using simple GDI graphics functions. So for instance, up here, from on paint we're calling draw map. Draw map uses move to and line to, and also draw 3 d rect to construct a simple two-dimensional map. And then when it's done, it's going to go call map tracking, passing in the instance of C-Paint DC. Map tracking will then draw an ellipse based upon the position of the player. Well, every time they click the navigation button, if we didn't turn around and then clear this rectangle and repaint it, we'd have a problem. And the problem would be that we would get multiple ellipses on the map. It wouldn't refresh things. And that's not what we want. We want the new position to be reflected on the map and the old position to be erased on the map. So we have to do this every single time. For example, Notice when I walk, in this case over here, our ellipse is being redrawn in the map. Now, if we weren't going to call invalidate rect, I'll just comment it out and rebuild the project. Let's see what happens. In this case, it's not painting the ellipse on the map. Next, we're going to take a look at two GDI methods that will allow you to draw lines on a C dialog background. The first method is move to. This moves the start position for drawing GDI objects to the specified coordinates passed in as an argument, but it doesn't draw anything. For example, if we build an instance of C paint DC and call it X, pass that into this pointer to the constructor, we can then take X and the dot operator and call the method move to to move the starting position to draw a line to 180 by 579, specifying the X and the Y. That leads us to the next method, line to. This GDM method draws a line from the last starting position point specified by move to or another GDM method to the coordinates passed in as an argument to the function. For example, if we built an instance of C paint DC passed in into this pointer to the constructor, we could then use our instance name X and call the method line to to draw a line from the last position to X152 and Y579. Draw 3D Rect is a method useful for constructing rectangles on a C dialog background. In this case, Draw3D Rect draws a rectangle on a C dialog object. 
Its constructor arguments are x, y, the width, the height, and the top left color and the bottom right color. Here's an example. We'll build an instance of cpaint dc and call it x, pass it in this pointer to the constructor. We'll create two color references that have RGB values to pass in as arguments. Then we'll use our instance of cpaint dc x, call the method draw 3 rect. We'll pass in 125 and 470 for x and y, 35 by 35 for width and height, and the top left and bottom right colors. As an example here, we're drawing a simple vector map using GDI methods in our RPG game C dialog. So in the onPaint method, I build an instance of cPaint DC, and then I pass it as an argument to the function draw map. It accepts the argument, and now I can create some C pens for setting the color, and then I can use my instance of cPaint DC and call move to to set the starting position. This is for the north one hallway. And then I use line to move to, line to move to all the way down to draw out the hallways between rooms. And once I've done that, now down here I'm going to use draw 3D rect to construct the rooms with rectangles. And these are my color objects that I'm passing in, the x, the y, the width, and the height. So these are all the different rooms I'm building, C1, N1, N2, S1, S2, W1, W2, E1, and E2 respectively. And now I'm constructing the remaining hallways down here, again with move to and line to. And finally, some of the last rooms here would draw 3D rect. And what that looks like when we bring up the C dialog is this vector map right here. Just would draw 3D rect and then move to and line to to construct the hallways between the rooms. Our next function is ellipse. The ellipse GDI method draws elliptical objects on a C dialog window. It takes the following objects and its constructor upper x, upper y, lower x, and lower y. So here, we're calling the ellipse method from x, passing in 112 and 407 as the upper x and y, and 127 and 422 as the lower x and y. Once again in our example, we're in the overridden on paint method. Within this method, we build an instance of cpaint dc, passing in this pointer to the constructor. We then pass our instance dc to the method draw map. It accepts the instance, and then uses it to call move to, line to, and draw 3D rec to construct the map. When it's done, it calls the method map tracking, passing in x again. Map tracking will then use the ellipse method to track the player by drawing an oval in every room or hallway where the player stands. And notice also we're modifying the color here with a C brush object and a C pen object. Remember, create solid brush, select object. We've covered those in other videos. So we're drawing the ellipse, passing in the arguments, and in this case for each room, this is where it would mark the player as standing in that room. Let's not forget the draw text method. The GDI draw text method allows you to draw text directly on a C dialog window's background without requiring a C static or C edit object. For example, we built an instance of cpaint DC called X, and with the dot operator, we're calling the method draw text, passing in Loki a C string, negative one because it terminates in a null character, the address of a C rect object called box, and DT single line. Remember our switch statement where we were switching on the value of location? Here's our C string Loki. Remember that we were modifying or changing the value of Loki as we went through the switch to a different value based on which room the player was standing in. Well, we're going to use that down here with a method called draw text, which without any kind of C static or C edit control will allow us to draw text directly onto the C dialog's background. When we do this, what we need to do is set the color. So in this case, we're setting the text color, the background color, and the background mode to transparent, blue, then I'm creating the font and setting the font to trebuchet MS and the point size to 65. Then for positioning the object, I need to build a C rect. And I'm going to build it in this case, and then I'm going to set the position with move to X and move to Y, 14 and 450 respectively. And when I do that, I'm going to call the method draw text. I pass in my C string with its value being wherever you know the player was standing, whatever room he was in, negative one. In this case, the address of my C rect object box and DT for a single line. To see how that works. Okay. And you can see we're walking through the map. You can also see the, you know, the string changing here as we're drawing text on the screen based on the player's location. And you can see the oval tracking the player as he walks around the map.
Let's take a look at a few more examples, in this case the polyline function. This draws polygons composed of lines segmented between points passed in as an array argument. The second argument is the number of coordinate pairs. For example, we build an instance of CPaint DC. We have an array of coordinate pairs, in this case of point objects, and then we can simply pass them in using the polyline method. The next method is like it and it's polyline too. Like the polyland method, it draws polygons. Unlike it, it starts at the current device context position. Next is polybezier. Polybezier and polybezier2 can be used to create objects with bezier curves. Remember, a bezier curve is a parametric smooth curve that can be indefinitely scaled to any proportion. Here's an example. Next is the arc method. Arc and Arc2 can be used to draw arcs in a window. Its arguments are HDC, which is a handle to the device context, left, top, right, bottom, X start, Y start, X end, and Y end. And finally, there's PolyDraw. PolyDraw can draw automatically closing polygons with curved edges containing a series of lines. Its arguments are a handle to the device context, a constant pointer to an array of the objects are the points we want to draw, another array of types, and then the number of points.